We are missing the beat this morning. That Joseph. We'll do with that. Good morning. Good morning. In Sunday school this morning, uh, I was kind of praying some some uh, scripture. It was kind of on my heart this morning. Here we are in the middle of wheat harvest, and uh, some of us are done. Woo! <laughs> There's a lot still going, a lot being taken out. But I was just thinking about the harvest and thinking about the harvest of the kingdom, and and uh, and and so if you have your Bibles, uh, flip open right quick to Matthew. Chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. We're going to be over uh, just quickly this morning. 36 through 38. Matthew 9, verse 36 through 38. And he says, Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest and send out the workers into his harvest. And I just, uh, you know, like we prayed about this morning, Corey had that, that prayer that, uh, that, the heart, that the mission field right here in our own area is, is pretty big. And, uh, and Jesus has compassion on all those people too. Every single one of them, every single person that's out there uh, that's going through whatever they might be going through, maybe they're not going through anything, but Jesus still has compassion for them and, and wants to wants to pour into them, wants to gather them, and, and they're, they're like sheep without a shepherd. And he says, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And there's a few of us sitting here in this church building compared to the amount of people that are out here in this area. And, and we can be the workers. If we're the disciples, we are the workers. So I feel like this is a challenge just for me at least this morning. Maybe you can take it to challenge yourself. So how, how can we go out there and spread his gospel and, and show him the good shepherd? And not to be with the not be like a sheep without a shepherd anymore, but to come to him and, and uh, man, the harvest is it's plentiful and it's it's gonna be good to see that all come come full circle, I guess. So anyway, with that on our minds, let's uh, go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. Lord, uh, thank you for this time of year. Thank you for all these pews that we get to sit in and for all the bodies that are sitting in them to come and hear your word this morning. Uh, God, uh, uh, your word is good and your word is truth. And Lord, we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to come down here and, uh, and live amongst us. And uh, Lord, that he, he, he lived and he died and he was raised again. And today we get to see the benefit of that if we we come to Him and, and accept Him into our lives and call Him our Lord and Savior. God, we just uh, we just thank You and we ask uh, for, for uh, confidence and boldness to go out there and talk about You to people that might not have heard about You. And God, just how good You are. Lord, this morning I just pray that Corey just brings brings the Word as the truth that it is like He like he always does, Lord, and uh, and, and Lord, let us, let, us, let us hear it with, with open ears. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is good. It is good to be here this morning. And uh, God is always good. Amen. Amen. God is always good. And it's good to look across and see all your smiling faces. It's good. Uh, man, it's also good to see all the youth in the church. Uh, as maybe you've heard, our youth group uh, is leaving on Friday to go on a missions trip um, to, to go and spread God's Word. And it's going to be an amazing trip for them. Um, Adam and Rachel were asking for prayers this morning uh, as they go. Um, and so uh, um, I think mom and dad's... Uh, are asking for prayers this morning. Uh, I'll speak for myself. I I've never had a list of gone for eight days, seven days, eight days. Eight. Christy and I are a little nervous about this. Um, more for Adam and Rachel dealing with our daughter for eight days. No, I'm joking. No, um, it's good. Uh, but there's some there's some prayer concerns in that. Um, but also um, for our youth. 
to grow in Christ while they're gone. Uh, what an amazing opportunity for them uh, in their walk. Uh, and along the way, I, I, we're going to pray that they get to change maybe somebody's life forever, truly forever, by spreading the gospel. So this morning, right off the bat here, uh, if you're new with us, great, join in. Um, but we're going to pray on our youth. Um, we're going to have our, our youth group, uh, all, the, all the youth that is going on this mission trip. Um, I'm going to ask you to come into the center of the aisle here. I'm going to ask Adam and Rachel to come and join them. And, um, and all the elders uh, are going to pray on them. And we're going to ask this church to gather around them. Um, lay hands on them if you want to. Um, and, and we're going to lift them up in prayer. <clears throat> because Friday they leave. And I'm going to ask you guys that you be praying um, all of this week uh, as they prepare, and then uh, um, for those seven days that they are they are um, on this journey, uh, please be praying for them daily. Uh, so um, right now we're gonna we're gonna invite all the youth up uh, and and um, please gather around. So youth group, come first. If you're on the mission trip, come up here first. Gather up in the in the circle here. And uh, we're actually going to anoint them in oil, too, because that's what the Word calls us to do, is anoint them in oil. I don't know if they knew that, so they might be freaking out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but it is good um, that we have this group. Are we missing some kids? Well, now I'll say welcome to Beach Rally. <laughs> it seriously is good to have each one of you here this morning. And uh, if you don't know, uh, if you're new with us, uh, listening online, whatever it is, Beach Island is an independent, non-denominational, Jesus-loving, Bible-preaching church. And what that means to me is that we fight like mad to be about God's Word. Not about religion, not about legalisms, but about God's Word. And that's where we fight to be. And I pray that that is where we are, is in His Word. It is, uh, it is good. And uh, that's, that's where we try to be. And if I'm not, call me out, please. So, uh, so that I stay there. I uh, have a few announcements this morning. Uh, the first one, God loves you. God loves you. And uh, that's right. That is right. It is good that He loves us unconditionally. Um, ah, now some, now some real announcements. That was a real announcement. Now some, some other announcements. Uh, uh, July 30th, right on your calendars. July 30th, we are going to do uh, baptisms in the river at our house. Uh, Christy at my and Christy's house. Yeah, how are you saying? Yeah. Um, July 30th, that evening. Uh, if you are at all thinking about being baptized, please talk with me. If it's on your heart at all and you're, and you're contemplating that, I want to talk with you. Um, if, if that doesn't work out to, to do it there, great, but let's still talk about it. If, if it is going to work out and you want to do that, please let me know. Um, we're going we're gonna to open that up and, and just uh, anybody that wants to be baptized in the river, uh, we're going to do that uh, on July 30th. Also, though, uh, bring some food, bring games if you want to. We're going we're gonna to have an evening of fellowship and just fun as a church, and, and it's going to be good. But invite some people, okay? Uh, it doesn't, it's not exclusive to be tried. Uh, if we're overflowing into the pastures, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. So uh, come and join July 30th. Put it on your calendar. Um, more details to come, but I but I want to get it on people's calendars and come in and join. Uh, um, I think Tucker uh, volunteered uh, the Weavers to bring instruments, uh, Lalfins to bring it. So it's just going to be a, a night of, uh, of just fun and doing some praising and um, maybe a fire or two or I don't know. Hopefully just one maybe. <laughs> There'll be lots of fire because we'll be on fire for the Lord. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, open it up to John, the Gospel of John, chapter seven. We have uh, we have uh, wrapped up. We wrapped up chapter six last week, and in what a teaching chapter six has. But let me just tell you, chapter seven has more. It is good. It is good. Um, this this thought that starts in chapter seven. It goes all the way to John chapter 10, verse 21. It's kind of all one thought here that John is laying out for us. I will tell you right now, we are not going to read and try to work all the way through that. Um, 
We're going to work our way through it slow. Um, but that is all one thought. So I want to encourage you this week, though, to read all of that. From, from John chapter 7 to John chapter 10, verse 21. And, and just read that and, and get familiar with what's going on in this thought as we work our way through it. And, and, and you know, by Christmas, I hope to get through 10, chapter 21. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe maybe a little sooner we'll, we'll get through that. But uh, I love this gospel. I love the gospel of John and the teaching that it gives us. It, it really is, is quite impressive what John lays out for us. And just like I said, we can, we can work our way through it fast. Or we can slow down and, and just crawl through it. I don't know if we're going to crawl through it, but I want to take my time working through it. I want you to take your time working through it because there's so much detail in this that I want us to get and gain knowledge and understanding that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Because John gives that to us. John says in John chapter 20, verse 31, but these things are written so that you may know, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believe Him have life in His name. I want you to memorize that. I've been saying that verse a lot lately. But I'll tell you what, it, it lights me on fire every time I read that before I start into my study of my sermon. Because that's what I want us to get out of this. Is that we will know, we will know, we will know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And there will be no doubt in our mind as we journey through this life with Jesus. So I'm excited about this. Um, uh, we're going to read John chapter 7 through 8 and 1, because it's kind of a, a, a good stopping point there at 8 and 1. Uh, um, just, just so you... I know all of you know this, but I'm just going to say this. That when this was written, there was not a chapter and verse to it. It was written. And they tried to, a man tried to take and, and put chapter and verse to it where they thought it would maybe best break. But sometimes it wasn't the best break. I'll just tell you that now. Sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes you've got to keep reading to get the thought of what's happening, the, the whole picture as to what's going on. And sometimes it's deep into another chapter and sometimes it's just one verse. But uh, this this breaks kind of at 8-1. And so, so just so you know why, I'm jumping into one more verse, but, but in that it happens a lot throughout God's Word that maybe the chapter breaks at the wrong spot. But it's okay. Hey, nobody's perfect except Jesus. And He didn't put the chapter verse to it. <laughs> Alright. Chapter 7. After these things, Jesus walked into Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret, while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time is not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. But when his brothers had gone up then, he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, He is good. Others said, No. On the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. 
If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks for himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keep the law? Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered and said, You have a demon who is seeking to kill you. Jesus, who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered and said to them, I did one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is true? Truly the Christ. However, we know where this man is from. But when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out, as he taught the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from. And I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know, but I know him. For I am from him, and he sent me. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of the people believed in him, and said, When the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer. And then I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Then the Jews said among themselves, Where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this thing that he said, You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come? On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out, has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the Scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David, from the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the officers came to the chief priests, and the Pharisees and said to them, why have, you not, why have you not brought him? The officers answered, No man has ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers of the, or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not know the law is a curse. Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him? and knows what he is doing? The answer is said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. And everyone went to his own house. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Quite a reading. Uh, I know I've been reading a lot lately on Sunday mornings, but you know what? It's God's Word. And, and, and I want us to get it. I don't want us to pick and pluck Scripture. I want us to, to, to see the picture that's going on here. I want us to, to gain understanding as to what is John trying to tell us because he, he gives us so much detail. 
I love that. I love that. And so uh, uh, please, uh, uh, can I say, bear with me as we read. And we're going to continue to do that uh, every Sunday and dig into His Word. And I, and I love it. Uh, before I get going, though, let's, let's go to Him in prayer. Father God, I thank You for Your Word. I thank You that we have it so readily available to read and, and just gain understanding from it. Lord, I pray that's what happens this morning, that we gain understanding of Your Word. I thank You for this Gospel from John, and I just pray that we read it uh, in a way that glorifies You and brings understanding to us. Knowledge. Lord, I thank You for that. And I pray this morning that we, that we see You, Jesus, in all of it. It's in your name I pray. Amen. I think to understand what's going on, we need to understand what the Feast of Tabernacle is. I will be honest. I, I haven't spent a lot of studying on what the Feast of Tabernacles is. But I think it's important to understand what this feast was in order to gain understanding as to what, what's going on. Uh, uh, the Feast of, of Tabernacle is, is one of three main feasts that, that happened, that, that took place every year. Uh, the Feast of Tabernacle, though, was quite a feast. It was ordered by God. God said that you need to, to partake in the Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, uh, it was a celebration of being released from slavery. Uh, Pharaoh had them locked down in slavery, and, and, and God uh, threw several miracles, several things that happened, they got released. And, and they went and lived in tents. And, and that's what tabernacle means, is, is living in tents, uh, temporary shelters. Um, maybe your version calls it a booth. Uh, 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 your translation of the Bible. But, but uh, a booth or tabernacle is what they were celebrating. That they got to live in those because they were freed from slavery. Uh, but in that too though, it was also a celebration of knowing the Messiah is coming. That they were looking forward to the day when, when the Messiah would come and they would get to live in a land of free and, and peace and, and just be good, right? And they were celebrating this. You see, this was quite a joyous occasion. It was a seven-day celebration. Really, eight when you have the day of holy on the back side of it, but, but a seven-day celebration where they truly celebrated. Uh, I mean, if you were an abled-bodied Jew, man, we'll say, you went. There, there, was, no, there was no staying at home working. But it, you, you would go, and your family would go with you. Uh, this is this this celebration was in the fall. It was right after harvest, uh, and, and they would put on quite a feast. I want you to think about maybe a celebration that you were part of now. Maybe as a kid that you would go to. Maybe it was a, a city celebration, a town celebrating like kind of Ray Days, right? Everybody gathers up at Ray Days. You have high school reunions. You have all this. All this going on, right? Maybe it's Beecher Days. Uh, a celebration in your mind that, that people would just come to. Maybe it's a county fair or a state fair that just pulls up memories of, of all family coming and just all the people of the town and anybody that was in a 100 mile radius would come, right? And celebrate. When I think about it, I, you know, I grew up on the front range of Colorado and I think of the Greeley Stampede. Uh, uh, not so much as I am older now, but when I was a kid, it was quite a celebration. I mean, there was lots of people there, uh, but more than that, Grandma and Grandpa, see, the really stampede happens and it, and it concludes on the 4th. Well, Grandma and Grandpa always had a barbecue on the 4th, and all the family would come, and so I associate really stampede also with family gathering. <laughs> and it was always good. There was always celebration. There was always people talking. And, 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 and in my own family, at the barbecue, you know, people would talk. Adults would talk until they were done. And cousins played. And it was fun. It was quite a celebration. But it had nothing 
on this celebration, on this feast of tabernacle. This, this was quite a, a celebration. Uh, this ta the, the Jerusalem would, would quadruple in size because everybody would come. There was music. There was, there was great praise and celebration. In the morning, every morning of these seven days, the, the priests would, would do their rituals. And, and there's so much depth to the rituals, and maybe we'll get to it, but not today. But when one of the priests would go and get water and bring it, uh, it was quite a celebration. I mean, people would line the street where the priest would walk, and they would play music and sing and, and just celebrate it. And, and there was dancing, just so you know, okay? It was, yeah, it was a celebration. I just wonder what, what it was like. I just try to wrap my mind around the celebration that was going on for God in this, in this feast. The, the music that was playing, the singing that was being done, and, and the hearts just pouring out. When we sing in praise here, are we just making noise? We truly celebrate our King. Think about it. Yeah. I don't want to make noise. I want to make a joyous noise because what I make is a noise. It is not music. I'm telling you. But I want to make joyous noise to Him. I want to lift Him on high. It's not about me. It's about Him. It's about singing praise to Him. And when I just think about this feast, because that's what they actually called it, was the feast. Like this was the biggest of the big, right? Like this was, if you were going to a feast, this was the one you went to. Now, of course they had to, but they were there, right? They were there. They, if they were a Jew, they were there. Quite a festival took place. In some ways I find it amusing that this was a celebration that was going on. When Jesus' brothers were telling Jesus, this is where you need to go. Go and show off, Jesus. Go show yourself to these people. Go and show yourself to the disciples so they can see you. You see, the problem was that his brothers were thinking of themselves. There, there, there was no bringing glory to Jesus in any it was all self-seeking. And, and I'm just going to throw this out here real quick because it's this little trail, but I don't know. Uh, some people want to say, well, that was not Jesus' brothers. Well, it was his cousins or his family. John wrote that it was his brothers. Okay? He wrote that it was his brother. If it was his cousins, he would have said it was his cousins. If it was some friends, he would have said it was his friends. John is very detail-oriented. And he said they were his brothers. Now... If you want to say half-brother, I'll go along with you, okay? Because it was the sons of Mary and Joseph, okay? So if you want to say half-brothers to Jesus, I'm with you. I'm with you. But they were absolutely brothers. As I read through this first part of chapter 7, my heart is sad in the way that, that Jesus' brothers treated. Uh, they, were, they were all about themselves, as I've, as I've said. They, they, were, they were looking inwardly. They did, they did not believe that Jesus was the Christ. And they're telling Jesus, hey, if you think you're so important, and, and you're seeking to be famous, go to that feast. Go up to the feast, because everybody's going to be there. Everybody's going to be there, and you can go and show off, and you will get none. When I really start thinking about the motives, though, that his, that his brothers had, I, I think of people of this world. I think about our world, you know, I, when I start trying to comprehend, though, why, why did his brothers egg him on? Why did, his, why did his brothers try to encourage him to go here? We know that they were seeking self because they were not seeking for Jesus, right? They were not trying to glorify Jesus. They were seeking self. So, you know, I, 
the only thing I can come to is two different choices. They wanted to send him so that he could be famous and they could get some attention off of themselves also. Or they wanted to send him so that they didn't have to hear about it anymore and maybe they had killed him. They didn't believe that he was the Christ. You see, uh, they were envious of him this whole time. And they were urging him to go to Judea and be killed. I really believe that. You see, when we read on in verse 3, his brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. See, I want you to know that his brothers had been witnesses of everything he had done. They knew what had happened up to this point. Everything that Jesus had, every miracle that he had done to this point, they had witnessed it. They knew it. But yet they still didn't believe. They knew that Jesus was not just a man. They had to have known. But yet they couldn't wrap their minds around him. They do not see or understand that he is the Christ, the Son of God. You see, they go on in verse 4, For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. And that's our world today, right? I already said, like, this makes me think of our world. Our, our world is all about, get your 15 minutes of fame. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how you get it. You get your 15 minutes of fame. Don't worry about it. What comes afterwards, it'll be okay. You'll deal with it. Look at our world. Look at our social media. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't know much about TikTok. Who does? Does anybody know about TikTok? Or am I just, just going? <laughs> Some of my girls are raising hand too. They should be anyway. Because, uh, but TikTok. Like it's this. I'm probably going to explain it wrong just so you all know. Just, just bear with me. But TikTok is this thing where they film themselves. They record themselves. And then they put it out there for the world to see. And, and the more followers, like, I don't know what it is, but the more they get, the more famous, we'll say, they become. Because you can be TikTok famous. Not my goal. But, but some people, that's their goal, is be TikTok famous. And they will say anything, do anything, to get people to watch their TikTok video. Is that what it is, video? Am I saying this right? Yeah. Am I just so far off? It's not even funny. <laughs> but, but the, I mean, I would love to say it's the youth of today that's seeking this, but I'm, I guarantee it's not. It's our world. It is our world today that's seeking to try to be famous any way they can get it. And it has to be, most of the time, pretty outlandish for somebody to watch your video. For you to get their attention so that they'll stay on it. Adam's probably back there laughing at me talking about TikTok, but it's okay, Adam. It's all right. It's our world today. Our, our world is seeking to find faith. And that's what Jesus' brothers are telling Jesus to go do. You want to be famous? Go find him. Go up there to the feast and, and find him. But more than that, it, it, it must have been pretty difficult for Jesus to have his own brothers doubt who he was. Uh, I mean, wrap your mind around this. Jesus is having a conversation here with his brothers. If you're an only child, um, it, it might be hard to understand this. But I, but I have two brothers, and, I, and I've sat down and had some pretty serious conversations with my brothers. And I, and I picture that with Jesus right now. He's having a pretty serious conversation with his brothers. A, a heartfelt conversation. But yet his brothers can only see themselves. They can only see themselves in this conversation. And Jesus is trying to get them 
see the Christ, the Son of God. Not Jesus the man, but Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. You see, but in all honesty, how often is it that those who are faithful in Christ find their harshest opposition with those that they love? It's truth, but it's sad. Uh, but I want you to listen to Jesus' answer. Verse 6 is where we're going to be. Listen to the answer that Jesus gives in verse 6. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. Several weeks ago, or maybe it was months ago, yeah, time flies by, we talked about Jesus saying that it's not my time. And we walked through that. We're going to walk through it again when it becomes time for Jesus to be glorified. But Jesus is telling him right now, it's, it's not my time. I'm not to go yet. Not to go and be seen. Not to go and be captured, we can say. But Jesus was saying, your time is always right. And, and this one kind of stuck with me. As Jesus told His brother, your time is always ready. Because they were living their lives according to their own will. Not the will of God. So He was saying, you want to go be a part of the world? Go be a part of the world. You can do that anytime you want to. That's your choice. You want to be part of the world? Go and do that. Go and live that life. Go and fill your every desire in the world. Because you're living of your will right now. So go and do that. That's what Jesus is laying out here to his brothers. Saying, hey, you don't want to be about me? That's okay. Go do your own will. Jesus goes on to tell them that the world cannot hate them because they belong to the world. What a statement. I think they understood that? And they understand what Jesus was telling them. Hey, you go, you go to the feast to be of the world. And the world, the world can hate you, can't hate you because you're part of it. You fit right in with it. I don't ever want to hear those words. I don't ever want to hear those words for myself. The world can't hate you because you're living it. You, 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 you don't look any different than the world. You match the world so it can't hate you. See, they took sides with the world instead of Jesus. And it was a choice. Just as it's a choice for you. We can choose to be of the world or we can choose to be of Jesus Christ. You see... Uh, what I mean by the world here is a system that man has built up. A system that, that man has built up in which there is no room for God. If you don't believe me, look at education today. There is no room for God in education. Now, there are some small schools that let God in their education, and that is awesome. That is awesome. But I mean on the main scale, on the big scale of education, there's not room for God. Think of politics. Is there room for God in politics? Man, I wish there was. It was built on it. It was built on it. The world of culture, in general, is not room for God. And what about religion? Is there room for God in religion? Just think in Judea, it was the religious world. It was the Mecca of religion. Can we say that? I think so. And, and in that, the, that religious world had the rulers of the religious world. And they hated Jesus. 
They hated Jesus. They wanted, to, they wanted to kill Him. And Jesus said, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. When we start thinking the world is good, we've got it backwards. This world is evil, and Jesus lays it out to us, right? When we stand for Jesus and call things of this world evil, we will be hated. There's no way around it. If we stand in the world, we'll be loved. But if we stand against the evils of this world, we will be hated. Even in the religious world. It's a sad picture in our world today because I feel like the religious world is going further and further away from God and more conforming to the world. So now today when we stand in the truth of Jesus Christ and, and we call people to not define themselves in their sin but define themselves as a child of God, we become hated. We become hated. Our world is back. Our world is backwards and we cannot fall to the temptation of being conformed to this world. But if we want to be out of the world just like Jesus' brothers were, we can find the love. But let me tell you, I think that's a false statement. Because I hope when you step into these walls, you find love. I hope that when you're around other believers, you find love. Because I hope that as Christians, we're not choosing to be of the world. You see, Jesus, even in this discussion, as He's telling them that you have chosen the world, you've chosen to live that way, He still wanted them to come to Him and accept that He is the Christ. But let me tell you, in this, Jesus never expected them to be perfect. Jesus was not calling them to be perfect in their ways, just as He's not calling you to be perfect. He just wanted them to believe that He was the Christ, the Son of God. But there's more to this. You see, when the, when the Lord told His brothers to go to the feast, there was something very sad about it. You, you see, his, his brothers pretended to be religious men. Because they needed to go to the feast. They had to go and they were going. They were going to go keep the Feast of Tabernacle. Yet the Christ, the Son of God, was standing right there in front of them. And they had no love for Him. The truth is, man loves religious rituals. Because they're so easily done with no heart transformation. Most rituals, religious rituals, don't change the heart. It's an act that is done that makes you feel good. That makes you feel like you, you accomplished something. But no heart transformation whatsoever. And that's what his brothers were doing. I'm going to this, I'm going to the feast. And they went to the feast. Yet the Christ, the Son of God, was standing right there in front of them. See, uh, I back up to the beginning when I said that this was the Feast of Tabernacle. It was a celebration of being freed from slaves. Right? And they got, they, 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 God wanted them to celebrate that. And it was, it was a celebration of looking forward to the Messiah. They couldn't see that the Messiah was right there in front of them. The greatest celebration of the world that the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God is standing right there. We look at this celebration and what a celebration it was. But you know what? We should have a celebration right here. Every time we gather and we lift up our God because we are freed from slavery of sin. When we come to Jesus and we let Him be our Lord, we are freed from the slavery of sin and we can walk in the freedom of Jesus Christ. 
They were celebrating the Messiah coming. Man, we should be celebrating that the Christ has come. The Christ has come and He's already died for you. He's hung on a cross and He's wiped away sin. Wiped it away. There's, there's no more hanging there. As soon as you accept Him and you let Him be your Lord, you are granted salvation. The sins are gone. Man, if we're not jumping for joy and singing at the top of our lungs every time we get to sing praises to Him, something's wrong. Seems like we're turning our mics down too often. I want to turn them up because you're singing so much and so loud. Making a joyous noise to the Lord that we have to keep turning it up up here. It is a true celebration of what God has given us. And I don't want to downplay that ever. I don't ever want it to be about religion or a religious act. Ever. I, I, don't, I don't want to stand up here and preach to you because it's my duty or it's the religious thing to do because on church there has to be somebody preaching. I don't ever want our music team up here singing because, well, they're just doing an act up here or a performance. It's not. It's to lead us in praise and worship of our King. And every time they're up here singing a song, it is a prayer of praise to our God. And I want us to get that. I want to get that. See, I want to be all about lifting up Jesus, not about doing rituals of a man. And I want our church to be of the Christ, the Son of God. Always. And we'll fall short in it. I promise you as the elders and, and me as the pastor, preacher with pastoral duties, I will mess it up. But I want to keep on seeking Him. I want to keep on lifting Him up and never be about a religious act or a legalism that we need to do. I'm going to invite the music team up and, and, uh, and we're going to sing here in just a minute. But I just want to tell you that if you have some rituals, we'll even call them religious rituals that are holding you back, I want you to lay them down at Jesus' feet today. If you've got something holding you back from allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you, to praise like we're supposed to praise, I want you to lay it down. I want you to put it at the feet of Jesus because I don't want anything stopping you from praising our God the way we should praise Him because I'll tell you what, He is right here in front of us. And I want us to recognize Him. I want us to see Jesus today. That He is right here. He is in our midst. The Holy Spirit covers this place. He is in you. He is everywhere. And I want you to know that. I said before that Jesus did not expect His brothers to be perfect. He just wanted them to admit, to see, to understand that He is the Christ, the Son of God. And today, He says the same to you. I don't need you to be perfect. I don't need you to clean it all up and come to me. No, He says, come to me. And I'll give you rest. You see... He just wants you to admit that He is the Christ, the Son of God. And when you do that, when you make Him your Lord, you'll be saved. Sin wiped away. White as snow. And you will have the promise of eternal life with Him. We should be so full of joy because of that. I, I, I don't want that to depress you. Or, or, or be somber. I want to celebrate like they were celebrating at the Feast of Tabernacle. Praising. Singing. So today, if you've got something holding you back from coming to Jesus or lifting Him on high in praise, I want you to lay it down today. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, today's the day. Today's the day to come to Him. Today's the day to confess that He is Lord. And if you're doing that today, I want to pray with you. 
And if you are trying to lay something down, but you're fighting, I want to pray with you. And I'm just going to put it out there that if, that if you need any prayers at all, if, if you're coming to Him or if you just need prayers because the, the, the burden is too heavy, I want to pray with you this morning. Come forward as we stand and sing here in just a minute. Father God, I thank You. I thank You for this morning. I thank You that we have Your Word. And I pray that we see when we were being religious, Lord, I don't want to be religious. I want to be about You. I want this church to be about You. I want every individual in here to be about You. The Christ, the Son of God. And know that we have salvation in You. God, I, I thank You for this teaching. I thank You for Your words. And Lord, I pray this morning that, that if we got walls, we knock them down. You knock them down. If we got rituals that are getting in our way that we that we lay them at your feet, we knock them down. I want to pray that that happens this morning, right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Stand, sing with us. If you need prayers, come on.
Heavenly Father, we, we come to you, we praise you, we lift up our voices with joy. We know you'll hear it. God, we thank you for this word this morning, Lord. Help us just to see Jesus and know that he is the Messiah, the one that came for us. God, that uh, it's nothing that we can do. To come to you on our own, we come to you through Jesus. God, we just, uh, we just thank you for providing that. I want us to know that no matter what's holding us back, whatever, uh, whatever might be holding us down, the briars and the barbed wire and getting beat, Lord, we know that uh, we know that you are the thing we can reach for, that you will, you will dig us up, you'll get us out of the out of that. God, we'll give our lives to you. Lord, help us to see you for exactly who you are in all your all your glory. God, we thank you. Lord, I just I just ask and praise you. Ask we can all see your blessings for exactly what they are. be with us this week as we continue on uh, help us to proclaim your your word, your name in our own lives and maybe to other people Lord thank you thank you for these people, thank you for this building thank you for what we can, what we can hear on a Sunday morning